Hello, welcome to the latest episode of Walter's Corner. And welcome to Sister Harlow's Library. I'm Adrian. So, the latest book that I found that my father had was Harlem Renaissance Art of Black America. And it has some of his um, favorite, one of his favorite artists is featured in here, um, which was um, Van Der Zee. So I'll read some of the things that was said in here and also show some of the art it is really, really good. So there is a lot of different types of art that is featured in here, um, but I also want to talk about some of the items that is said. America in the 1920s, however, made reconciliation elusive. On the one hand, the very positive notion of a black vision of American life that drove upon the cultural wealth of black folklore and in interpreted the African past along with the realities of black American history and the day-to-day -day experiences of black life did in fact engender images and stylistic approaches that were fresh and new. On the other hand, the separation of American life, which required a separatist foundation to hold segregated exhibitions, the absence of repositories to collect and preserve the art and the distortions of critics hostile to the very notion that black people could make high art only served to widen rather than narrow the breach. Disappointingly, the legacy of the Harlem Renaissance has been a cultural separation that to this day persistently lingers in the history of American art. I would argue that that still is the case today. This book was published in 2003. And I would say those same feelings are definitely still going on um, today. <coughs> and I'll just show some of the art here. And I'll go to see another section. Otherwise, I've tagged a lot of things and I might not be able to, to do a lot of the things. But here's a famous picture of Zora Neale Hurt, Hurston. And I've um, been reading her thanks to Brie from Brie Cherie Reads. Let's see. Oh, and here is um, Paul Roberson is on the opposite page. Sorry about that. Here's a picture of him. Famous black actor. And um, So, try to cut this down, this is kind of long. So there was somebody that, um, assuming came from Britain because he's Sir Osbert um, Sitwell, arrived in New York in late 1926. He observed that no one was sober and everybody seemed to be as rich as Croesus. Never have so many rich people been crowded together in so minute a space. <laughs> He believed the torrent of prosperity swept on colored people offered hospitality as much as white 
and to Sitwell's astonishment, the conspicuous, conspicuous consumption of Park Avenue extended to Harlem. After merriment at Mrs. Cornelius Vanderbilt, yes, the Vanderbilt family, Vanderbilt's Fifth Avenue Chateau, Sir Osbert found himself at Alayla Walker's town home on West 136th Street. Her twin brownstones flaunted their mistress's wealth with their marble entrance hall, French gold and buff rooms, and abusum, might be messing that up, um, carpets beneath Louis the Sixteenth furniture. But Alayla Walker's imposing home was only one of Harlem's grand addresses. Stanford White's turn of the century Italianate houses under the trees on 138th Street and 139th Street, Strivers Row, were architectural masterpieces and addresses of distinction. Not as rich as Alayla, the band leaders, dentists, prize fighters, and surgeons who had almost entirely displaced the original white residents were nonetheless persons of considerable affluence and reputation. So, Alila Walker was a descendant of, I think she was the daughter <coughs> of Madam C.J. Walker, the first black woman um, millionaire. Okay. There's a lot more in here, but I wanted to cut it short because otherwise this video may be a little bit too long. Okay. Showing some more people. This is a band. Some more people. Okay. This is the um, manager of Harlem's Lafayette Theater in the 1930s. See, a lot of these were, of course, black and white photos in that day. This is the block that my church is on, actually. So, this is the Remy, which is no longer there. And this is the Abyssinian Baptist Church. Okay. And this person in this picture um, was, he was known as Daddy Grace, and he was an evangelist. Um, and this was 1938. So this is a picture of him, that, um, which person? That James Vanderzee took. Okay, and these are some more Vanderzee photos, and these are, um, protests and parades that went on during Harlem during that time. More than likely going down 7th Avenue. These are people who were members of different clubs having their photos taken. And I always liked this picture. This is a picture of a portrait of a couple by Vanderzee. They had raccoon coats on. So they definitely thought they were styling and profiling at the time. So this um, book, I believe you could definitely still get this book. Um, this book was done in conjunction with... Um, the Studio Museum of Harlem, which right now is still being um, going under renovations. Um, I live in Harlem, so I do notice that's a fact. So, uh, but you can definitely, you should be able to look this up and be able to purchase this book if you're interested in it. Um, but again, it's great to go through some of my dad's old books and have memories, um, seeing his signature in here. 
and um, I thank you so much for joining me for another one of Walter's Corner. See you next time.